Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coon Cassius for IFL TV. It is a brisk Monday morning. <laughs> I, am... <laughs> <laughs> I am joined by Gareth A. Davies. Um, well, it's been a, a crazy weekend in boxing. Obviously, we yeah. spoke um, on Friday. And a lot's happened since Friday, even. Like, um, with the situation regarding Fury and... And Usyk. But before we come on to that, Gareth, just a little recap um, from Saturday night. Joshua Boazzi in a very entertaining fight uh, and win over Dan Aziz. Um, yeah, what did you make of it? First yeah, time? it was really entertaining. Um, I mean, I, 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 I was still off on Saturday and I had simulcast with this and the Las Vegas event, the, the London event, Las Vegas event. A tremendous fight from both men. Um you know, I thought Boatsy was brilliant on the night against Aziz. I thought he commanded it most of the time. There was just a couple of moments when Aziz had ascendancy uh, in the fight and uh, just a chink in the armour, a chink of light where Aziz maybe could have really taken it to Boatsy. But he stood down on his punches. Um, I thought he was tremendous on the night. As I say, bossed the fight. It was unfortunate that the two knockdowns were kind of slip knockdowns. That, that really widened the scores at the end. I had it 116-109 with those two knockdowns, that 10-7 round in the 11th. Um, but it was, a very, it was a close and competitive fight, although Boatsy bossed it for almost the entire fight, you know. Um, great performance, great, great gentlemanly comportment from both men, a brisk fight all the way through. Um, it, it was um, highly entertaining, and they produced what they said they were going to do. Um, and they can be well proud of themselves as well. Um, they, they, really, they, they really made boxing shine on Saturday night. I thought it was a tremendous fight. What we need to know now, does Boazzi have another level and another level in him, in my view? Um, you know, because the, the fights against either Dimitri Bivol or Arta better be ever going to be very difficult. But I think a lot of us would love to see him fight Anthony Yard now. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the fight that kind of now makes most sense. Obviously, regard we know that uh, Bessie B. Evan and Bivol are going to fight on June the 1st. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears> but it does seem like if Joshua Boatz is waiting for that, he could be waiting quite a few months before yeah. that comes into play. So a fight with uh, Anthony Yard, though it being a risk ahead of a fight with uh, Bivol or Bessie B. Ev, seems like the most sensible thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I think if this was an 8,000-seater uh, at the um, uh, Wembley Arena, I think Watsi and Yard is probably an 0-2 arena, 20,000 fight in my view. Um, yeah, I agree, I agree. It's, it's, it's a big event. The timing's important because Yard's about to fight, isn't he? Um, and they can maybe do this in the summer around the time that... if if, if if better be Evan Yard, um, if better be Evan Bivol fight on June the 1st in Saudi with that undercard of Warren versus Hearn, and they won't know who the boxers are until they pick them. I love that, by the way. Um, they just pick the weight divisions and pick a boxer, but they won't know who's going up against each other until they announce it officially, like a draw. Um, if that happens on June the 1st and these guys fight around that time, unless they do a rematch, better be Evan and Bivol, which... I hope not, but if they do, they do. It means that Yard and and Boazzi are in sync for um, fighting the winner then or fighting for the undisputed or how many belts are there if they're fractured or not. So if they get those timings right, we've got a great period in the light heavyweight division. Absolutely. Um, one of the talking points um, from Saturday night was um, a certain Mr. Ben Whitaker. Um, his clips from his <clears throat> fight nights seem to always go viral, more so as he's getting more profile. Um, a little bit of a split opinion, I should say, about um, his style, shall we call it? I mean, I, I've just got to put it out there, I'm a big fan of Ben Wicker and I like what he's doing. Um, I can see the argument of people, um, what they've been saying, um, but, uh, you know, 
we're talking about him, I think the fact that we're even addressing that situation kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, he's highly talented. He's like come um, Jekyll and Hyde in the ring, isn't he? Um, or it's, like, it's almost like a split personality. Silky skills, and then literally you've, you've got the circus or the ballet arriving. I mean, the pirouette on Saturday night, the little touch on the head. I thought it was a bit unfortunate with the touch because... Um, <laughs> Look, I'm a big fan of his as well. He's extraordinarily talented. Um, he's an enormous size for light heavyweight as well. How he's going to stay at light heavy, I don't know. Um, but the, the, I think the thing is that the, the more attention he gets, the more we're going to want to see him in with the Bwatsis and the Yards and the Azizes and the, the Craig Richards and the, and, and the Bivols and Betabiavs eventually. Um, but... Um, I can't remember who the ref was on Saturday. Was it Mark Lyson? Um, I think it was Mark Lyson. But he was probably right to deduct him a point. And now, um, for the for the antics, for the, for the showboating, the problem he's going to have going forward now is now that precedent's been set. Other referees might do that to him as well now. Um, but, look, he's great to watch. He reminds me of Nazim Hamid. He's more outlandish in some ways than Nazim Hamid with, with the stuff. Um, I just think it's a natural exuberance that comes out in him. He loves being on that stage. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a great journey to follow Coogan. Mm, absolutely. And he's got to be, at this stage of his career, an absolute nightmare, like you said, for referees. Because you're right, it's going to set a precedent for his next fight, whoever's refing that, to think, Sh should I, should I not hear? And how far how far before I have to do it, etc. if he's, you know, because he's only, I should imagine, going to become more uh, extravagant in his, uh, in his style as he's going at this level. Let's, let's have it right. I think when, when he's in with elite fighters, we're going to see less of this. Um, yeah. But I think when people, when, when a referee puts their foot down and they, they, they not to expose something, but they, 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 they say, I'm not standing for this. It's a bit, but the same as Lawrence Acoli, when he steps back into the ring, you know, is he going to be punished for, for his style? Um, it'd be fascinating to know if he, if he does too much holding. Uh, but uh, look, Whitaker is something we should celebrate, not denigrate, in my view. Yeah, I agree. Um, Gareth, could you just come a little bit that way off your light? Just that light's glaring in. I, I know. I was trying to just move there, but I've got the sunshine glaring in. Hang on. How's that? Let me just move around here. Yep, if you just bring that down, that's it. There we go, how's that? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we spoke on Friday where we knew pretty minimal information. We knew the fight was at that point off um, for Feb 17th. Uh, we, know, we knew at that point that Fury had suffered a cut in sparring. Um, Saturday, le literally less than 24 hours after, um, it was a, quite a remarkable interview that aired uh, on Ariel's uh, mm. channel. Great scoop for Ariel to mm. get. Fury, uh, His Excellency Tur Turkey Al Sheikh, uh, Igis Klimas, and also Alexander Usek on the same Zoom. I mean, it was um, it was quite <laughs> entertaining. Is putting it lightly, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, Tyson at points lost his rag with with Igus Klimas in there. Um, uh, was that justified in your opinion? Yeah, just to rewind a little bit, you know, I did a, quite a lot of interviews. I did obviously yours was slightly later in the afternoon on Friday when we spoke last. I did an interview just before that, before that footage was out, and I'd said that maybe Fury was wearing a head guard or not. Obviously, he was wearing a head guard. That's absolutely clear. Um, uh, it was a wild and wacky Friday night, really, uh, Friday afternoon, Friday night, with, with what had gone down. Let me first say, I think Spencer Brown, Turkey Al Sheikh, and Tyson Fury, getting in front of camera with Yusik and Klimas as well on a dual cast, on Ariel Helwani's show, as you say, on MMA Fighting, on the MMA Hour, um, was a very bold and brilliant move in my view, because what it did, it quashed all the conspiracy theories straight away, which I think was important. 
and just to show absolutely that Fury was in phenomenal shape and ready to fight Oleksandr Usyk. Um, I think it just, what, what it did was it just, it killed all speculation dead. And I think I've got to take my hat off to, to Spencer Brown and Turkey Oshie, getting Tyson Fury out there in front of the camera straight away. Because very often in boxing, these things linger on for days and days, don't they? And we don't know what's going on. But you've got to commend what His Excellency's done in this case by saying, right, we're going to get this sorted out within 24 hours, redo the date. And it just stops speculation and it stops people wondering and moaning um, and, and knowing that we're just going to move on with this. I thought it was a brilliant move. It's rare when we get it so quickly, isn't it? Um, and I thought they quashed everything by doing that. And, you know, in one fell swoop, in a half an hour interview, we got exactly what we needed, which is, no, the fight is still on. Here's the genuine cut. Some other announcements from His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. I thought they did a brilliant job in, in handling the PR of that, of that event. I don't know if you agree, but I think it's unusual to get it so with so much alacrity and then be so brisk about getting it done. Absolutely brisk. Um, yeah, I think the short space of time, like I said, from the, from the moment the news broke, it was within a 24-hour period. Um, I was actually at the Boazzi fight at the time and everyone was trying to kind of keep up with what was going on regarding the interview. But for it to be so public um, and... Uh, some of these stipulations put in by uh, Turkey Al Sheikh, which were quite extraordinary, to be honest, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but it seemed to be what you said there was correct. It was right. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to keep this behind closed doors and put it in press releases or for people to wonder. We're going to go on. The, the, the people involved in that fight uh, closely, we come on and we tell people what was going on. Um, so just to dissect, uh, we'll, t we'll, we'll come on to Clemson. I did ask you about Igor uh, and Fury in a second, but there were some things in there which were quite interesting. I, I think the first notable one, and which gives everyone kind of the confidence that, like I said, these squash some of these crazy stories that, yeah, Fury had cut himself and all this rubbish. Um, the 10 million forfeit was interesting. Um, so if for any reason one of the fighters is to pull out, there is a $10 million forfeit, that straight away sends a very strong message to uh, to, to both parties. Yeah, well, what they're saying is that fight is definitely going ahead. A fight of that magnitude is going ahead on, on May the 18th, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so well, that's great news for a start because we know we're going to get an event. If both are injured, they'll get someone else on there. As he said, we, what he's doing... Is, is saying, we are going to make sure events like this happen. We can't leave it to one person getting injured the week before. And, and I think it's all progress. This is all progress. There's things in boxing that we accept that need changing. And that's where this paradigm is being shifted right now. And it's, it's really good for the sport. It's really good setting precedents. Um, and if Fury's eye isn't, if it reopens in sparring or whatever, we'll get another opponent. They're suggesting Anthony Joshua, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so, which is great. Hergovic is being brought back into the mix as well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that, let's say he's available. That'll happen. Um, people will still have their conspiracy theories about this, that and the other. Yes, it has been delayed and delayed for different reasons over time, over the last year and a half. But... Um, you know, hopefully, um, we do get that fight on May the 18th. It's a fight we all want. We all want to see the undisputed title. We haven't had that the the, the belts fought over since uh, um, the second fight between um, Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield in 1999. I think it was November 1999. So um, it's it's a big time. It's 25 years. Um, so it's 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 a phenomenal thing that we've got. The investment and care and and alacrity and perspicacity and briskness of His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh in getting these things sorted out. Um, in answer to the Klimas, look, Tyson Fury, you've got to take both sides in, 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 in fairness. I'm sure Egis Klimas was not insulting Tyson Fury's wife 
I, I'm, I know Eggis, he wouldn't do that. He's not that kind of guy. But Tyson was right to flag that because Clemus, I mean, they can all be abusive about each other at times. But um, Clemus was pushing that Fury was deliberately pulling out, which was nonsense. And that was quashed in the call. Um, and Fury was just saying, you better not have been calling my wife that. And Klima said, no, it wasn't your wife. He was using the B-I-T-C-H word in terms of someone in your camps hit you with a pan to open your eye. It's frustration. Probably shouldn't have said it. Um, but the, the good thing is the fight is on. It was dramatic, but I liked the way that, <clears throat> again, Turkey Al Shape was saying to Fury, just calm it. Just calm it. This is all going to get played out, you know. They're doing a great job. They're doing a great job in difficult circumstances, given what happened on Friday night. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was it was almost surreal at times seeing that kind of situation um, unfold. Like I said, on <laughs> live as well, um, which is very. Uh, by the way, Ariel did a good job um, emceeing it all as well. By the way, I thought. You yeah, know. absolutely. I always think he does, and yeah, 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 he's a great guy. I've known him a very long time. We're very good friends. I thought he did a great job. In fact, I got on. On a on a call with him afterwards on on WhatsApp and we um, WhatsApp video and we had a good chat about it. I thought he did a great job of of a, of a a very interesting situation because we don't often see that and we need to see that more where people get on a call and resolve an issue where both sides are there that we can both witness. We rarely see that. We see it in a staged press conference, um, but this was a very open forum with the opportunity to speak. And I thought they were themselves as well. Yusik, um didn't seem too bothered about it. In fact, um, uh, a friend of mine was in his camp uh, when it happened and he kind of shrugged uh, when it happened apparently. And he, and he was, and that's what I was told um, when he was in his camp in Spain. And to be honest, that was corroborated when we saw him on that call. He, 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 he doesn't raise his voice. He doesn't get too annoyed. He just accepts it as the situation. I think he just wants to fight Fury. Um, and I, I'm sure Fury wants to fight uh, Yusik as well. If you're Anthony Joshua, what are you thinking about this situation? You're focusing on Francis Ngannou, first and foremost, because yeah. you don't want that banana skin. Um, you don't want that to go wrong in any way. So um, that's very important. Um, over and above that, um, you're you ha you're going to have a little bit of an eye on what's happening, but that that will emerge. If look, I, I don't see how Joshua goes from a fight with France and Garnu on March the eighth into a fight with Usyk or Fury, by the way, on on May the thirty first. Because let's say Usyk got injured. Surely they would delay the fight a bit longer for Joshua to um, recover after the Nagano fight. Yes, see that. I but, mean... but maybe not in these shifting times, and may, maybe he would come through and fight him. But, but what I think is important is the attitude to get these guys in the, in the ring together is, is, is there, and they're, they're going to make it happen. This is um, an ever-changing, obviously, I said, we said this, talked about this a little while ago, about the next two months are going to really kind of, well, it's extended to now maybe five months of... Uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Um, sorry, three and a half. Um, but this is, seems like a change, it's changing every day, the landscape of what's going on. So what we're talking about today literally could be relevant or not relevant by the night in terms of what we're talking about. Yeah, but we know that that's the case all the time anyway. It's a weird and wacky sport. You always have to expect the unexpected in boxing. and um, But they're trying to find solutions to things rather than it drag on. How many times have we had to wait for a week or two weeks to see what's going to resolve? They've got the wherewithal, the money and the attitude to make it happen. So they can go, no, what we're going to do, we're going to make it happen on that date now. Let's sort the date. How long do you need? Um, how long do you need to recover? No, we want to announce to the public that it's going to get done. And it's done, which is brilliant. What do you think of that time scale? Um, obviously, Fury's, the heel's got a, uh, uh, the cut's got a heel, excuse me. 
and then he's not going to be sparring while that's healing. So, what do you think of that time scale? Enough time? He's got to have time. That they've made a decision based on on um, medical evidence. I'm sure medical advice and you know knowledge of how quickly he heals. And and they've just made that decision. I think it. I think there's a risk of it o- opening in the fight. That's the danger. Um, <clears throat> but there's scar tissue there anyway, isn't there? It's the same part of his eye that was cut in the Wallin fight. So, but he did seem to get grazed by the elbow um, from um, from the Croatian uh, uh, fight boxer and mixed martial artist. So, um, look, there is a risk. There's always a risk. Shit like this happens in boxing. You know, people get cut. Um, and you you could you could tell from the people that know their stuff inside the sport that you just have to shrug your shoulders and go, it does happen. I mean, like the response from David Hay. Remember when he was cut against Tyson Fury uh, before he was about to fight Tyson Fury? And yeah, he's he's put a video that, out from yeah. So it's a right, look. Um, they've obviously decided it's long enough, so it's down to them. I think it's it seems very quickly. Uh, it seems very quick to get back in there, but um, they obviously think it's long enough, Coogan. So, I, you know, you, you have to go with that. But what he can work on now is strength, getting yeah. his power up. Um, obviously, no um, no combat um, and no sparring, but that he can still work on all his strength, his physical strength. And some of the videos coming out from people like Kevin Lorena, you could really see that Fury was genuinely getting in fantastic shape. Um, so, after the March the 8th card, or on the night of the March the 8th card, we're expected to hear the official confirmation of the June the 1st card, which will be headlined by Dimitri Bivol and Arto Betabiev, which is also going to feature the 5-on-5. Five five. Uh, we're expecting that fight night to get announced that week or that night. Uh, for June the 1st, which makes the May the 18th and June the 1st in that two-week period yeah. uh, very interesting. Absolutely. We'll, we need to book our flights and our hotels now. Yeah, it does make it very interesting. It's going to be a big summer um, of events. And, and what's evident is the the desire to invest in boxing from the Saudi Arabians is now outside the Riyadh season as well, by the way. So that's all good news in terms of what's What's happening in the fight world in terms of investment at the moment? Mm, absolutely. Okay, Gareth, um, have you got anything else you'd like to yeah, add? Just a quick comment on Connor because I've got people here and I'm going to have to go in a sec. Um, yeah. Um, I think Connor was. I, I've, I've what, rewatched the fight. I, I had two events on at the same time on Saturday night. I've rewatched the event. He was desperately trying for a knockout early in that fight um, and trying to blast Peter Dobson out of there. What rewatching it, Dobson is very, very tough and um, better than people were giving him credit for going into the the, the event. Um, you know, I, I have described it as a so-so performance from Connor, but it was pretty dominant. He took punches himself that I thought he did well in. Um, I like his attitude that he wants to fight Devin Haney and Tank Davis and. Um, and Eddie Hearn still wants to make Chris Eubank Jr. It's a fight we'd all watch. Um, obviously, we were with Senior last week who said, no, it ain't happening. I want Harlem Ben to get in there with him. Um, sorry, Harlem Eubank to get in there with him, um, which is a fight I'd love to see as well, by the way. Um, Harlem Eubank and Conor Ben, I think it's a great fight. Um, one's a kind of crafty, artistic stylist, and the other guy's a blaster. Um, so, you know... He's back on track. We need this appeal hearing resolved. Um, it's, 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 there's a cloud going to follow Connor for, it might be all his career, but for a while anyway. But um, it's great to see him back on track. <clears throat> um, but I think I'd like to see him. And I just think he, he's, he's trying so hard in there. I'd like to see him sit back a little bit and just... Um, mind you, maybe he never does. That's just his style. He's a blaster. Um, it's good to see him back anyway. And I'm sure he'll be in big fights for the rest of the year. 
Well, he's asked Eddie Hearn outright for publicly as well for his next fight to be a big fight. Um, we saw the Twitter exchange yesterday between himself and uh, Javante Davis. I mean, how realistic that is. Yeah, but the big thing, Coogan, is it's whether he fights in the UK or not. That's yeah. that's that's the key with it all, you know, because um, some of those big names could come over here and it would be a big draw, but he needs to get that British licence for that to happen. Just one final one while I've got here, just quickly. What have you uh, what have you made of Carl Frost's comments recently regarding Fury? Obviously, Carl's very prominent on his own YouTube now. Um saying that Tyson Fury's heart's not in boxing anymore and uh, he doesn't think that we're going to see Tyson Fury fight again. I'm sure you would have seen oh. him. Well, I think he said that, I think he said that before the, re and the re-announced date. Um, um, I don't know. That's just his view. I th I've said it to you before. Carl does a lot of clickbait. He's very strong in his opinions. He's a legend. He's a Hall of Famer and a legend. Um and he he just loves to put very very strong views out there on things, and they're yeah you know, they're opinions. They're just his opinions, um, and you know he look it, it obviously he's he's had a public um, spat with with John Fury recently, um, certainly um, you know a kind of YouTube spat, and uh, he's just got his views. I, I don't really agree with him. I don't think Fury's. From what I've seen of Fury, it doesn't look like his heart isn't in it. He, he's probably got one or two fights left. That, that's it, anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, he's just entitled to his view. Simple as that. Gareth, thank you very much for your time. As always, we'll catch up at some point this week, I'm sure, when something else happens. So Yeah, well, no doubt. Yeah, and I'll let you crack on with the rest of your day. Cheers, Cougs. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Always okay. a pleasure. Cheers. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.